by and large, the martial arts have been dominated by men since forever. Women have had to fight not only their training partners, but also an archaic belief that women can't do that. This woman had a hip throw no dude could ignore. Keiko Fukuda was born in 1913 in Japan. Her father passed away when she was still very young. So she was raised by her mother and other men in the family. She learned all the things that Japanese girls were supposed to know. Ikebana flower arranging, brush writing, and the intricacies of the Japanese tea ceremony. Fate, however, had other plans for her future. But let's back up for a second. In 1882 Japan, a guy called Chigo Dogano opened a martial arts school. He is the founder of Judo, which emphasizes accuracy and speed over muscling and winning at all costs. It uses an opponent's weight, strength, and momentum against them. It's a way of life. <laughs> of course, his school was only for men. And we all know black belt. The initial reward of that black belt was first don. The highest rank they could achieve was ninth don. Took him about 40 years to, you know, invite women. So when she was about 21 years old, he invited her to train. One of about two dozen women. Her mother and brother kind of supported it. No, oh, she might find a husband on the mats. Yeah, because that's totally, totally why we train. Her uncle flat out discouraged her. It wasn't appropriate for a girl. Once, her family arranged a marriage for her. But when she met him, he told her she would quit judo once she was a wife. Yeah, so she told him where to stick that shit. And chose judo as her life partner instead. She never did get married. I can't forget her degree in Japanese literature from Soa Women's University. Huh, strong and smart. Hmm. Anyway, back to Kano. Sources said he likely invited her so he could honor her grandfather. Grandfather was called Fukuda Hatsinosuke, descended from the samurai class, an expert in jiu-jitsu, and Kano's teacher. Yeah, so he did let women in, but he, like most men, believed a woman was incapable of having the ability to hold the same rank as a man. So he came up with a brand spanking new ranking system just for women. And they could not promote past fifth don, regardless of their ability. But she never worried about rank or how long it took to get the next one. She loved judo, not recognition. In 1937, she became an instructor. And by the early 1950s, she had achieved fifth don and was completely maxed out. She was Fukuda Sensei. Now, did you know that after World War II, Judo and Kendo were banned in Japan by the United States? They were considered too militant. Buddha Sensei trained elsewhere until the ban was lifted. But in 1953, a United States Judo club invited her to give a demonstration at the All Women's Mills College in Oakland, California. It was her first trip to America. Following her demo, school administrators immediately offered her a position and she accepted. She taught there for 10 plus years. While there, she met Shelly Fernandez, who became her student and best friend. Shelly gave her a place to live. They were friends and business partners for more than 40 years. Before you ask, no, I found no confirmation they were a couple. In 1964, the Olympics were held in Tokyo. Buddha Sensei was 51. It was the first year men could earn medals in freestyle judo. Side note, women weren't included until 1992. Why rush into any fucking thing, am I right? Kuda Sensei was invited to give a kata demonstration that year. Kata are choreographed forms of fighting maneuvers. She was an expert in a gentler form called Juno Kata. She later tried unsuccessfully to have kata added to the world championships, which could lead to Olympic inclusion. I wasn't able to confirm that that ever happened. So in 1989, she started her own world championship. The Keiko Fukuda International Kata Championship. Take that, Olympic Committee. Anyway. In 1966, she was giving seminars around California and opened a school for women called the Soko Jusi Judo Club. She taught there for decades. But by the late 1960s, Shelley was getting pretty pissed on her friend's behalf. I mean, it had been about 20 years since she had been awarded fifth Don. So Shelley started a petition campaign to get the Kodokan to promote women to 6th Don. Obviously, it was mostly on her friend's behalf. The Kodokan refused. But soon, it was an international request. Men decades younger 
now outranked her, men she likely had a hand in teaching. In 1972, the Kodokan finally caved. Some sources said to save face. Regardless, Fukuda Sensei became the first woman to achieve sixth dan. That same year, she became a United States citizen and spent her life in San Francisco. 1974 saw the first ever women's judo camp in the United States. Fukuda Sensei was one of the lead instructors. That still happens annually. So, Kodokan. They kind of quickly promoted her to seventh and then eighth dan. But it wasn't until 2006 when she was fucking 93 and 34 years after she'd achieved fifth dan that the Kodokan finally promoted her to ninth dan, making her the highest ranked woman from a recognized judo system in the art's 120 year history and only the fourth person at that time to hold the rank. The other three were men, <laughs> but the Kodokan. According to sfgate.com, those three dudes, yeah, those other three. Yeah, so she got ninth dan, and they achieved a new rank, 10th dan, because heaven forbid she was ranked at their same level. There is no higher rank today. So in 2011, she was 98 years old and made history again, when USA Judo made her the first woman in history to be promoted to 10th Don and the first person to receive it in the United States. She was one of 16 ever and the only woman ever to hold that rank. At the time of this recording, she remains the highest ranked woman in Judo's history. Kuda Sensei passed away in 2013, just shy of her 100th birthday. She was the last surviving student of Judo's founder, the last direct connection to Kano. Throughout her life, she brought Judo to the world, but especially to the women of the world. I feel like she probably didn't hesitate to put men in their place when they needed it. She created scholarships so kids could train, founded competitions in schools and other organizations, and her students adored her. They were so thankful for her nod of approval when they got it right. And even into her last years, she was teaching. She would sit in a folding chair on the mats, the only chair allowed on the mats. Chairs on mats are never a good thing. From her chair, she would teach hand techniques and offer correction to those students training around her. But she wasn't weak and she had not lost her ability. Case in point. During one class when Fukuda Sensei was 98 years old, she was watching a young woman struggle. And she was meant to drop to the ground while grasping the lapels of her opponent's uniform, roll to the side, and tossed her opponent in a heels overhead somersault on the mat. Yeah, I'd have been confused too. Anyway, when words and hand motions weren't helping the young woman, Guda Sensei stood, all <laughs> 4'11 of her. She left her cane behind, walked up to the woman, reached up and grabbed her lapels, and tossed her three times in a row. Then she calmly sat back down and watched the young woman succeed. In 1990, Japan awarded her the Order of the Sacred Treasure in recognition of her dedication to the advancement of Kodokan Josi Judo. She won a lot of awards. She once said, too many awards, too many awards. She founded schools that still stand, wrote textbooks and two autobiographies, and has appeared in documentaries and other media. As I said, for her, it was never about rank or recognition, or winning. It was simply her way of life and her true love. No, oh, but back to the Kodokan. Despite repeated proof of her expertise, the Kodokan never promoted her to 10th dawn. Upon her passing, Guda Sensei's dear friend Shelley said it was the end of an era, but her influence on Judo was far-reaching and lasting, because women have been hip-throwing men's bullshit ever since. 